In this week's video, I'm going to be gutting out this first generation PS3, which doesn't really have any value to it, especially when it has the red light of death. Right here, I had a custom built Windows Manillion PC with an HP Pavilion motherboard with an AMD processor. And I looked at the size, the form factor is a Flex ATX or something like that, and it's 9.5 by six and a half or so is the perfect size to fit in this ps3 housing right here obviously i'm not using this 95 old slow thing i purchased this asus h61m-k motherboard brand new it's a 600 watt corsair power supply for a small and four factor so when you open it you guys will be very surprised how small it is all right now for the moment of truth Take this out, the manual and such. I'm telling you, look how small this is. It's the size of my hand. Look at that. We have the Intel i5 3340 quad core 3.1 gigahertz CPU. We also have the thermal paste for the CPU. We have the eight gigabytes total RAM. These are Kingston four DDR3 RAM each. They're dim RAM as well. And we're about to open the thermal take CPU fan and heat sink. Here is the small form factor fan. I did buy the fan, the RAM, the CPU used. Everything else is new. The motherboard is new. I bought it from Amazon, brand new, but it didn't have the original packaging. I bought the thermal from eBay, brand new. This is also the Arctic Silver thermal paste. The power supply was brand new as well. So now let's begin installing this. So right now I have the motherboard screwed slash grounded into place. Now let's install the power connectors as well as the power supply, the fan, the CPU, the RAM, and boot it up for a test. Always, always hold the CPU, the RAM, the PCI slots, like in a very correct position, like, like this. You never want to touch the contacts, these contacts, because it, your oily fingers, human skin, all this stuff could short circuit it. It will just cause a damage and your motherboard, your CPU will contain more damage and will not work. You will need to replace the parts. So be really careful. And you see these little notches right here on the left and the right. You're gonna align that with the notches that on my left, on my right. I don't know, I'm gonna point out with the corner of this. There's one notch right here where the shadow is, and then the other notch is right here. You're gonna gently place it in there. Gently. You don't wanna damage any of the pins on the LGA motherboard. There we go, and now we're going to gently close it. Let me zoom out of that. Gently close it. There we go. Don't forget to apply the thermal paste. I bought this off Amazon for about five to six dollars or take silver thermal paste. Just dab a little bit on the CPU, not too much in the center. Like that should be good enough. And now carefully place your CPU heat sink and fan. This is how you should pick up a RAM. Never touch the pins like I said, as you will damage the conductors and all that stuff in there. You're gonna align it with the correct pattern. I'm gonna cut the video because I can't do this with one hand. So I had a bit of an issue with one of my RAM sticks. My BIOS code came up, the sound, the speaker. So what I did was I disconnected everything, switched everything from the original chassis to this new chassis, seated everything correctly. Let's see if this works now. Let's turn it on. The fan is spinning, that's a good sign. That's a BIOS code, that one little beep for this specific BIOS, that means it's going good so far. 
I think the bias is what? Yeah, American trend. Everything's all good. Whew. We have our CPU, which can be read right here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to switch everything out to the PlayStation 3. It's still an operating system on this M.2 SSD, but we're going to need an adapter. The PS3 housing bottom case, we're going to rip out the four or five uh, screws, the little clips. I don't know, these little thingies that hold the screws in place. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. I am going to get that sanded down so I can later fit this piece of metal housing right here that holds the motherboard and grounds the motherboard in place with the chassis. As you guys can see, this specific type of chassis you can literally just take this out cut it and fit it right here and glue it right, so we took out the four screws one two three and four we're gonna put that off to the side and now we can clearly pop this out just like that this is perfect this is exactly what we need now we're gonna put it just like this right here and we're gonna end up cutting around here around here and a little bit around here so this is the best layout and setup that i will be doing a couple of minutes from now with the power supply and the motherboard so the best outcome is that i have every single point of contact from the top portion to the bottom of the portion of the ps3 housing sealed in correctly so it will be looking like the original ps3 the only modification i will be doing is this portion right here which is I will stick the PS3, no, the power supply in here. I'm gonna take this cover off for a second. It's gonna go on top of this. Well, I'm gonna be cutting all this out. So it's gonna go right here somewhere. So in order to do that, I am gonna have to cut where I put the permanent marker spot right here. And right here, I'm gonna cut all this stuff out, fit the power supply in there. It's gonna be sticking around 0.5 centimeters, not too much and the exhaust hot air is going to be showing right here the ventilation so i'm going to have to cut this right here so that the hot air can escape the power supply so that no hot air can be trapped inside the computer so far this is the progress that i've gotten so far with the case it's going to look like this for the most part nothing is actually placed permanently in place i still need the glue or use 3m tape but here it is, the Flex ATX board bracket. And look at that, the PS3 is pretty much flushed in with the top and the bottom portion. This is going to look pretty insane, I cannot wait for this. So there are several methods to attach this metal housing plate to this PlayStation 3 bottom portion. I'm going to be using 3M tape because it's the easiest and it's the most simplest method that will not melt this. And now keep it very, very in there. As you guys can see right here, this wire is actually a Wi-Fi adapter, adapter card. It came out of a Dell laptop. And this is an M.2 key A and E slot. So I'm going to be using an adapter for that pretty soon. Connecting it to the PCIe. And with the PCIe slots, I am going to be using an extension because when you plug everything back in and you close the case it will not fit so i'm going to be using some extensions for that so when you have a bunch of computer parts and other sorts of electronics and brackets out as you guys can see i was able to custom make myself a bracket to hold the power supply in place so it will be holding it from the back as you guys can see right here this is the pci slot extensions which will go to this USB port and the Wi-Fi card, which I will show you in a second because it will not fit once you close the case, but I will be able to reroute the cable management and these PCIe cards around the computer to make it fit. And I needed this M.2 to SSD conversion because I have this and I just wanted to use it. I want to make this computer as fast as I can. The home button is probably one of the most difficult things I've ever installed on this project right here because it's not it's at an angle it's not like straight so whenever you put the cover back on the button is going to be slanted and that's going to be the home button for now i might change it later on so it looks flushed in i'll show you what i mean in a couple of minutes but the home button is also another difficult process because if you bend the soldering points where the wires stick out you will break the wires the soldering points and you'll have a useless home button so to work around this, I had 
to mount a computer bracket from my compact Presario desktop. Right here, use two screws holding it in place. You see how these wires are soldered right here? If you bend that, it will snap. So I brought the wires down below. It's not the cleanest look for the PS3, but that's gonna be the home button for now. I will change it later on. And we brought the wire up. And because the, whatever this is, didn't fit through this hole right here, I had to snip it. I'm gonna use some vampire shrinking tube to put it back together. Remember how we had to cut the exterior of the case to fit the power supply? Well, now we're gonna reuse the same part we cut off right here. You know what this means? It's gonna be holding the hard drive and then the SSD 2.5 SATA SSD. So now let's use the epoxy glue and gl start gluing this together. So now with the front USB hub port, we're gonna modify this random PCI bracket, this riser, which I found in a pile of bunch of computer parts. I'm gonna be putting this bracket under here like that. I'm gonna have to drill a hole right here, get a screw in there with a bolt, a nut, and then have this little edge right here, as you guys can see, hold the top portion like that so it creates pressure so that this PCIe card will not move around. But now we're gonna have to drill some holes on the case and get a couple of long screws like this, and then put it through the other side and we're gonna have a nut that's gonna hold this in place. I am gonna to have to cover this with some electrical tape so that it doesn't damage the board. So we got the PCIe bracket installed right here. Two screws. And now we had to sand the holes out from the original PlayStation 3 SD card and USB slots so we could fit this PCIe card in here and the brackets, the very tip of it could stick out. See how the USB brackets are sticking out just a bit, kind of hard to see from here, but it's now fixed in place for the most part and to securely fit it, we're going to drill some holes really carefully through these holes. I'm going to do it from bottom to top, that way I know where I'm drilling. But I had to remove this plastic piece right here that came out. All you gotta do is just pry out carefully up and yeah, pretty much up and sideways and then it comes out like this. And then once we have the two holes as we can see right here, we're gonna begin using these type of screws to screw it in place. I got this at Home Depot for about a dollar and twenty. And there we have it, all four screws screwed into place, and the USBs are in here. It's not the prettiest, but this is pretty hard to do, customization. And with these screws, I was not able to find a smaller size at Home Depot that would actually fit this perfectly and tightly. So because these screws are not impeding anything and they will not touch anything or short circuit anything, I'm going to leave it as is. It's not the cleanest work, but... What really matters is the final product, to be honest. USBs works. Let me just unplug one just to show you guys. That's it. And then we could push this USB in there. And that's it. Now let's start finishing the rest with this trim. We probably are going to have to customize this to fit these two screws right here. So with the Dremel, I used it to drill out the edges of this small plastic chrome trim piece. And I cracked it, as you guys can see. It's kind of hard to see. Let me focus it. There's a small crack. Other than that, it's pretty much flawless. And now we are going to put everything together in the screws. Right, this is pretty much almost finished. Now what we're going to do is get the network card, the wireless one and 3M tape it right here. That way it's easy to remove it whenever we need it. We don't need to drill holes for that. And that's the same thing with the SSD and the hard drive, which are in here. So 3M tape is holding it in. Now to get the power button to see through the outside part of the casing, 
we're gonna get a piece of plastic paint it black what i did was i just removed the black portion like a little dot as you guys can see right here and now it's see-through while the rest is black what i'm gonna do is i put epoxy on it here's the mixture and it is drying right now if you look at it from the edges you can see the glue a little bit still wet when it dries i'm gonna grab the led and paste it on where that hole is right there well not a hole but where the see-through portion is so that light can pass through so unfortunately for me but probably lucky for you guys with this boring long video my camera died it didn't record the last step of the video but I'm going to explain what just happened. Basically, I put all the screws together, closed the case, installed the operating system via USB. And then from there, that was pretty much it. If you want to see the final product, here's the video right now to view the final product. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please stay tuned for more future videos later on. Peace.